when those words landed in these, just these two, you know, holes on the sides of my face called ears, like, what's the big deal, right? They're just words, right? But boy, those sound waves created this explosion. And then this explosion started a whole wave of other of other things. So on rea- in the reality of what was happening, the iceberg was like <laughs> massive. And, and what we were seeing was just the tip of the iceberg. And so it it was it was so much so much more and i hope i'm answering and addressing the question you are and i and i i hope that again i don't want this to be something that um you know i know sometimes when we leave these interviews with multitudes of guests and i'm sure that maybe you even experience this with the work that you do sometimes we have to recover from it or in the moment we're vicarious like we experience it vicariously um, that's yes. always a danger of, you know, my job <laughs> here is feeling all of this with you and, um, and doing that. And so I want to make sure that, you know, this is pacing in a way that you do still feel safe talking about all of this. Cause I know that this is very difficult. Um, and, uh, and you have answered it, uh, you know, it, it, intention here and not at your expense. I just want to make that clear, uh, Richa is you mentioned this great word icebergs, right? Yeah. When we show up in life, people rarely see the depth of everything else that's actually floating beneath the surface. And, um, and, you know, holding everybody personally accountable for their depth of iceberg is fine. It's fair. It's fair for us to eventually, and, and honestly, we are the only people that can heal ourselves, regardless if we're the reasons that we have things to heal, right? None of that happened was our fault. It wasn't your fault that you were abused. Um, but yet we're also, I believe, accountable to each other to understand the depth of this, that, that there is this universality that a lot of us have experienced varying degrees um, you know, of traumatic experiences. And none of them are better or worse or you know, larger or smaller or whatever it is. They are just who they are and what they are to us. And, um, and I think sometimes we only understand that when we can hear... Um, you know, hear the stories of other people like this, you know, um, and the context, which seems harmless, right? The business meeting room, you know, and just trying to motivate the team, you know, with whatever words it needs to be. And again, using languaging and words that um, wouldn't fly today, (laughs) you know, I don't, you know, I can't imagine it now, especially in the wake of Me Too, than any supervisor, but they're still used in meeting rooms around locker room talk, Um, you know, boys will be boys, you know, uh, just, you know, I didn't mean it that way. You know, that's the other thing um, that people use to, to couch those statements, but that doesn't mean that, um, you can't end up inflicting a wound. And, um, and you bring up a great example here of showing that we don't always know where our landmines are, you know, I mean, we don't even know sometimes until we've stepped on it. And as you described that internal explosion, like I know that feeling of like this, whoa, I just got blasted with this, this rise of, you know, fighting or fleeing or freezing or something that's going on. And now I need to resolve that. And I'm in the heat of the moment. And I don't know how to make sense of it right now. And I think that's important, you know, to, that, that you shared with yeah.